Hey, how are you? Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome to the very first t tutorials of 2012. And what we're going to do today is a few, several tutorials for the networking game. Uh, probably a majority of those today will be from the networking game. Uh, one, maybe two from the artificial intelligence tutorials, since those are kind of more complex. And uh, several tutorials, probably two are going to be from a mini-series type of thing. I've had several questions, emails, comments on what, how to, uh, you know, people want to do their own tutorials, and if I have any tips for them, I'm just going to create a video for those that are interested in creating tutorials and what I do, and hopefully you can learn something if you ever want to do tutorials. So it should be a fun day. The majority of the content will be the networking game, uh, so hopefully we'll get that game finished for you guys. And like I said, one tutorial, maybe two, of the artificial intelligence. I think we're on avoidance now. Not the, not the avoidance we did before, but the actual hiding. So if the enemy turns towards you, you want to go and hide somewhere. So that's going to be a complex task in itself. So we'll probably only do one artificial intelligence tutorial today. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, this tutorial I'd like to discuss a little bit about validation. Uh, there's been a comment or two on the YouTube videos that say the server should validate what the client sends to make sure that I'm not moving at 300 pixels or something incredibly large and uh, I just wanted to discuss a little bit about that if you really wanted to you can modify the server to fit your needs uh, but it will take a lot more time you'd have to basically do the exact same stuff here you'd have to also include uh, the uh, using, you'd have to add up the Microsoft X9 framework to get to the Vector 2s and everything else that you might need. So what I suggest is I want to keep the server, I want to use the same server for multiple games. So I do not want to create the server depending on one client. If you want to, that's fine. You can just uh, add the framework into the using statement. And then do exactly what you see here, which is read the bytes, and then you have to have it aware of your specific protocols. And uh, you can certainly do that on the server side, but then it's becoming dependent on a single client. You'd have to create a new server for a different game. So what I suggest is to do it on the client side. Whenever the client receives data, you can validate it here. Now there's really not much I can validate here. The only thing we could validate is a player moved. And we really cannot do that because as the game currently s sits, if we run the game without the server, it'll crash. Uh, but if we run the game, we move the player around. The movement is locked. It's either 0 or 200. So there's no way it can move faster than that. Alright, so I started the server and the game, and it's either not moving or moving at a static speed. So there's no way we can manipulate the velocity to fit our needs. Now, if you really wanted to, uh, you could see when the enemy first where the enemy, the old enemy position, as uh, so we have a vector two, and that will be old position, and we just set that equal to enemy dot position. All right, now we need to have a new vector two called uh, new position, and that will equal uh, this new vector two here. So just cut and paste that above. Alright, so now we have the old position and the new position. 
Now, we need to calculate a vector 2, and let's just call it distance vector. And that is equal to new vector 2, uh, new position dot x minus old position dot y, new position dot, I'm sorry, old position dot x. New position dot y minus old position dot y. So just calculating the vector between the old and the new. So now we need to set check to see if the distance vector dot length is greater than 200. So if the distance vector has a length greater than 200, remember our speed is to add 200. If you want to make this a variable, you can, uh, but we only use it one or two times. So if it's greater than the maximum speed we allow, we need to distance.normalize. We need to normalize it. Then we need to set distance times equals 200. Point oh F. Alright, so there we just did validation on our new position and old position. Now all we need to do is set the enemy dot position is equal to vector two dot add enemy dot position comma distance. So we add it on the distance vector because that's the one that changed and we do not use the new position uh, because that's an invalid request from the client A that sent it to client B. Alright, so now you might want to send a create a new protocol that says validation here. And then have that send to the other client to say, hey, you sent me an invalid position. Now you need to update your position to this or something like that. So what you can create a validation protocol and then inside your gamemode.cs, uh, you can handle that. So let's handle that at the end. Uh, let's actually go ahead and send it first. So let's look at our send code. We need to just copy and paste this. And actually, let's take all this stuff. Because if the distance is greater than 200, we would validate it. If it's not, uh, let's create an else. And let's set enemy dot position is equal to new position. So if it's not greater than 200, uh, we're good to go. If it is, we need to validate it, then send the information. So let's write the dot validate validation protocol. And what we need to write is the enemy dot position dot x and the enemy dot position dot y. All right, so this client validates it and it needs to send the new validation to the other client. So now we need to process that information. So we need to have another else if block for the protocols. Else if P is equal to protocol dot validation. So if it's validation, what we did was we we are sending the position X and then the position Y. So we need to read the position X and then the position Y. And remember, these are floats, so we need to read a single. Float position X is equal to reader.read single float 
position y py is equal to reader dot read single vector two is equal uh, vector two new position is equal to new vector two px comma py and now what we're going to do is set our player dot position is equal to new position all right so we had to change in the validation both clients need to be in sync otherwise the enemy in one game window can be far to the left and in the another game window it can be far to the right so we need to have a simple uh it needs to be the same version or relatively close All right, I think that's it for this one. Let's press F5. Let's compile the game. Uh, F6, actually. If you do not have... I've done that in the past where I assumed people have F6 mapped. If you go to build, and then uh, build solution. We do not want to run it. Just build it. So if you... I think it's control F5 on some installs. Uh, so just go into the build options, go to build solution, and see what it's mapped to. Uh, because we do not want to run the game, we want to go to the output window. If you don't have that, go to view uh, output right here. And then that way we can see where it sends it to. It'll have the name of the project. It'll do it based on the project, not the solution. Uh, and that's a sub-project technically, so it's not going to build that to something else. So, it's going to put the name of the project, and then an arrow, and then where it sends it to. So, I want to go all the way up to the debug or release, whichever one you have selected here, and then the slash. Because I want to run two instances, so I want to get to this folder and run two of those games. Alright, so now here we go. Let's go ahead and minimize that. So I'm going to move on the right side, which means the enemy on the left side will move. Now I'm going to move on the left side, and it should move on the right side. All right, so there we go, validation. Now, like I said, you can have the server do this yourself, but you're going to have to go one step farther and actually have the server do all the stuff you see here. It needs to get the information. It needs to get the strings or the bytes or the floats or whatever you send it, and it needs to be aware of its protocols so you know what to validate. Or you can just do it on the client side, and if the client validates it, you need to send the validation. You need to create a new validation protocol and send that to the next client. Saying, hey, you sent me bad data, you need to move back to here, or something like that. Basically, whatever the server was going to do, we're just doing it on the client side. So having them taking care of it. And yeah, this does, also I was, uh, had a comment, yeah, this does say, say bad data whenever a client disconnects, uh, because it just sends a null data, it just sends no data, and it says it's bad data. So I'll fix that when the final game is finished, I'll fix that bad data message. Alright, so next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and... I'll build a few more protocols. How about a player hit protocol and actually get the collision detection going and actually hit the player. So I hope to see you next time.